Welcome back everyone. Today we're making a face mask with a breathing valve and this face mask also includes a pocket for a PM 2.5 filter. The pattern comes in multiple sizes including children's sizes and all the sizes are made the exact same way. Thank you so much for watching and let's get right into this project. Getting started with supplies, grab 0.25 yards of fabric. I recommend grabbing a nice soft cotton for both the lining and the outer layer. Or if you want to step it up, look for a high density woven fabric. One breathing valve and I'll supply a link for this in the description. Extra wide double fold bias tape. You can also make this yourself or just buy it pre-made. Eighth inch braided elastic if you choose to do the elastic back. And I'll also supply links for softer alternatives to elastic. Parachute cord or shoelace if you choose to do the second option of tie back. One twist tie or coated wire. And links to all the supplies will be available in the description below. And lastly your pattern and this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super easy to use and it comes in multiple sizes. All you have to do is print it off, tape it together, and cut it out. After cutting, you're going to want to end with one front main panel cut on the fold. And make sure you cut the breathing hole out only on one side of the panel. Two front and lining bottom panels, one cut out of your lining and one cut out of your main fabric. And this could also be the same fabric if you choose to use one fabric. One center lighting panel cut on the fold. And lastly, two lining side panels. Moving on to construction, grab your center lining panel. We're going to hem the edges by rolling the side over, pinning it down, and stitching along that edge. And we're going to be stitching as close as we can to the outside edge. Repeat this process for both sides. And now we're going to place the right sides together and sew along the diagonal edge to the nose. And we're going to be sewing at a quarter inch seam allowance. And go ahead and trim just the tip of that. This is going to make it poke out a little bit more flush. Grab your lining side panels and we're going to do the same thing. Roll over the edges as indicated on the pattern. Pin the hem down and stitch as close as you can to the outside edge. And make sure you fold these panels in opposite directions because they're going to be going on each side of the center lining panel. And go ahead and sew as close as you can to the outside edge. Grab the center lining panel and your side lining panels, and as indicated on your side lining panels, we're going to place the center lining panels over those marks. Pin the panels into position, and we're going to do a tack stitch at each corner. And this stitch is going to be done as close as you can to the edge. A quick way to check to see if you have it lined up correctly is look at the bottom and the top and make sure they're lined up flush. And this is how we're going to create that pocket for the PM 2.5 filter. Grab your lining bottom panel and what we're going to do is make notches on top and bottom. It's indicated on the pattern but an easy way to do this is fold this in half and snip both of those corners. Once you have your notches we're going to take that curved edge notch and we're going to line it up with the bottom of that center lining panel. And this is going to go directly in the center of that panel and you can also make a notch on your bottom center lining panel to make this step easy. And once you have it lined up, pin that entire edge and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is going to complete your inside lining. And I generally like to use the softest material I can find for this layer because it's going to be touching your face the most. Moving on to the front main panel, fold it in half with right sides together and we're going to do the same thing on the nose. Sew at a quarter inch seam allowance on that diagonal edge. And like on the lining, go ahead and snip that point to make it flush. Grab your front bottom panel and we're going to attach it the exact same way. Line up the notches, pin it together, and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Next grab your lining and your main panel and we're going to place the lining inside the main panel with wrong sides together. And an easy way to line this up is using the top nose seam and the bottom notches. And once you have it lined up, go ahead and place a few pins in it to make sure it stays centered. And what we're going to be doing is placing bias tape on both that top and bottom edge. 
But before we move on, I'm gonna show you a quick way to do it if you don't wanna use the bias tape. What you're gonna do is place the right sides together and you're gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance along both of those edges. And if you do it this way, I recommend going a size up in the pattern so that way it takes into account for the seam allowance. Going back to the bias tape method, you can either use pre-made bias tape or you can make your own or you can use a bias tape attachment if you're using pre-made. You just place it all the way along that top edge and sew it on and if you want to use bias tape straps just leave enough so that way you can tie it behind your head. And keep in mind you will be adding in the twist tie as you're sewing on that top edge of the bias tape. The second method is to make your own bias tape with the bias making kit. It comes with a bunch of different size folders for whatever size you choose to use and also a binding presser foot so it's super easy to sew on. And if you're using this method, cut your bias tape strip to the size folder you choose. Feed the strip through the folder and iron it as it comes out the other end. And as you can see, it's rolling over both the edges as it's coming out so it's creating that double fold bias tape. And this is another great technique if you're trying to match all the fabric on the mask. You'll want to start it about 10 to 11 inches out as well and this will give you enough room to tie it around the back of your head. And don't forget to add that twist tie in as you're sewing on the bias tape. And then go ahead and repeat the process for the other edge. And as you can see, using the bias tape as a tie back, you're pretty much complete after this step. To finish off the ties, all you have to do is roll over the edge twice and add a tack stitch. And if you choose this method, I recommend serging or bias taping the raw edges on the side. I think this is a quick and easy solution if you can't seem to find cord or elastic. I like to serge the raw edges. I highly recommend doing this and if you don't have a serger, you can also use a zigzag stitch. This will clean up the edges and prevent fraying. Next we're going to show you how to use the cord and the elastic. Using the cord and the elastic, the cord you're going to want to cut at about 24 inches and the elastic you're going to want to cut at about 11 to 12 inches. You're going to want to place it on the inside as close as you can to the edge and roll it over. And what you're doing is hemming that edge with the cord on the inside. And when you go to sew that edge, just make sure that you don't sew over the cord. And if you choose this method, it's going to be the same as the bias tape ties. It's going to go around your head and tie in the back. And you can really use any type of cord for this technique, just make sure that it fits around your head. And the final method is using the elastic and it's going to be done the same way. Roll it over and make sure you don't stitch on the elastic. I like to add a few pins into that hem so that way nothing moves around as I'm sewing. And you're going to want to stitch about a quarter inch away from the outside edge without stitching over that elastic. And go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. And the elastic will be going around your ears, so you're going to want to tie a knot on each side. And I'd recommend tying a knot over stitching because once that knot is pulled tight, it's going to hold a lot stronger than a stitch. Trim up the ends sticking out of the knot and then you're going to go ahead and slide that knot on the inside of that hem. And like always, go ahead and repeat that process for the other side. And if you're making these for other people and don't know their size, you can use elastic cord stoppers so that way you can adjust that elastic and it will fit everyone. If you're having trouble finding these, I do have a link in the description. And the last step of this mask is to add on your breathing valve. The breathing valves are sold in all different styles, I'll add a few in the description below. You just want to make sure it comes with two pieces so that way you can snap off the back, place it on the inside of your mask, and then go ahead and snap on the front. It's a really simple process of adding these on and it does add a lot to the mask as far as if you wear glasses, you're going to have a little bit better breathing through that fabric. And that completes your mask. The last step is to add the PM 2.5 filter, but if you're having trouble finding those filters, I do have a video on how to make alternatives. I'll link that in the description below. The filter is easily added by sliding it into that pocket, flattening it out, and you're good to go. And that completes your mask with a breathing valve and a pocket for your filter. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. This pattern will be available on our website, so definitely go and check that out. Other than that, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think. If you have any ideas, definitely send them our way. Until then, we're going to keep the videos coming at you, so we'll see you next time. Always, always.